Amen. Praise Him, praise Him. I pray that you came out to do that this morning, to praise His holy name. Thank you for being in the Lord's house today. It is so good to see all of you here today. If you're here visiting with us, we want to say thank you so very much for being a part of our service today. And I ask you just to make yourselves at home and let's worship the Lord today. If uh, you need the restrooms or, or any of the facilities, that are through this door to your left. And uh, any of you mothers that need a mothering room, if you'll go out the same door downstairs, follow the signs to downstairs. There is a restroom and there is a mothering room there as well. Glad that you're here today and so thankful uh, for all that, you, uh, are, that God has done for us and looking forward to serving and worshiping him today. Uh, let's do this this morning. We got a, a special prayer request. Let's just lift our hand today. Amen. Many of us in this church have requests today. I know the Lord is able and the Lord can touch and uh, he knows the request behind that na- uh, the request behind that raised hand today. So just pray that uh, God will touch. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, ask him to touch our service today. Lead God and direct us. We got a couple of men that's out preaching this morning. Brother Dalton Arrington, he's in Mellow Valley preaching, so y'all pray for him. Uh, be with, uh, pray for Brother Trey Moore. He is in uh, Graham, Alabama at Shiloh Baptist, or Shiloh Baptist Church there. So you pray for him as he's pre- preaching off today. And glad God is using the men of our church to go off and, uh, and to preach. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time, asking him to touch our, our, um, our service. Brother Paul Palladino, would you take us to the Lord in prayer? Amen. You can be, you can be seated today. Um, I got a, a announce a couple, a few announcements I want to make today. Um, these flowers that are up here have been placed in memory of Suzanne Marie Wiggins, Gary E. Wiggins, Gordon Capitola Wiggins or Rollins, excuse me, Gordon and Capitola Rollins, Jean and Opal Wiggins. Ray Caldwell, Tony Rogers, Beverly Rollins, Thompson, and Lucy Copeland White. So we thank God for the, the ones that have placed flowers here in the memorial in memory of um, those that have gone on to, to be with the Lord. So we thank God for that today. So I appreciate Miss Phyllis. I believe it was uh, her and Miss Janice were responsible for putting those there, and we appreciate that today. Amen. I uh, hope you had a good week this week. Amen. I hope God has, has been good to you. And looking forward to what God's going to do. I got just a couple announcements I want to want to share with you this morning. The first thing I do want to do, though, uh, tomorrow is Veterans Day. And listen, the reason why you had the ability and the freedom to go to the polls and vote last week was because of a veteran. The reason that you have the the ability to come out to a church this morning and worship God in freedom uh, uh, of religion this morning is because of a veteran that fought. Uh, the reason you have uh, the ability to live in a free uh, democracy, a free, a free land where you're able to do and speak your mind and, and have the First Amendment rights and Second Amendment rights and all the amendments that we have, the, the Bill of Rights, the reason you have that is because of a veteran. And I want to thank God for the men and women that have served this country and are currently serving this country, keeping us safe, defending our freedoms all over this world. And I, we, we owe them a debt of gratitude this morning. Amen. And this is what I want to do. I know we have many veterans that are here in our church. If you are a veteran, have served in, or are currently serving in the armed forces in any capacity whatsoever, would you stand this morning? Amen. All over the house. <laughs> Thank you so much for your service, and thank you for uh, all that you have done for us and afforded to us. We are spoiled beyond belief because of your goodness and because of your ability and your willingness to serve our country, and uh, we thank you so very much for that. And listen, we we should say that a whole lot more than once a year on Veterans Day. Amen. We ought to tell them that every time we see them and every time we know them. So I appreciate what what you mean to this church and what you mean to our nation. a couple other things. There's raffle tickets. Next, this coming on the back of your 
bulletin, there is an announcement there for the turkey shoot. That will be this coming Saturday, November the 16th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or whenever they get done. So I, I, if you like shooting sports, if you like being involved in things outside, please come out. It's a great time. It's a lot of great prizes that we'll be shooting for. Uh, turkeys, and I don't know if they got any hams this year, but turkeys, all different kind of prizes, some cash prizes that they'll have. So it's always a great time. So come out 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It'll be here in the church in the, in the parking lot over here is where we've been doing it. So looking forward to that. And during that time, they will also be raffling off some, some uh, items that have been donated, an Oklahoma Joe pellet grill, uh, a Blue Rhino fire pit, and a lot of you young, uh, young teenagers have been selling raffle tickets. They are due to be turned back in to Miss Anna today, so make sure that you get those turned back in. And if you want to come and buy one of those, see a youth today or see Brother Dusty and Miss Anna after church, I'm sure you can buy a ticket. And uh, also, there will probably be tickets available to purchase at the turkey shoot as well. So looking forward to that coming up this weekend. A lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, amen? We had a lot of things that that's took place. How about this? If you were here last Sunday night for our Thanksgiving service, we just lift your hand up. How about that? Wasn't that something last week? Amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. We had a Thanksgiving service last week, a, a service of testimony and singing, and I mean this choir, you just blessed our socks off last week, amen? It was amazing. The testimonies were powerful, and God was in this place moving, and it was the perfect way to, to kick off a, a season of Thanksgiving that we are in now. So I want to thank everybody that was here. If you weren't here, I'm just going to say, man, you missed out, amen? Uh, make sure you, you come next year. That will be an annual event from here on out, amen? And uh, so looking forward to doing that next year. God's been so good. Um, November the 23rd, that's not this Saturday, but the next can you believe it? That's going to be set up day for our live nativity outside. Uh, that will be coming up the following weekend after Thanksgiving. So busy time, but we need all our able-bodied men that can come and help us set up our nativity. Usually doesn't take very long. It, we've got it down to a science now. We'll put it up pretty quick. But on the same day, we're also going to take all the wood that we busted and split that day, bag it up, get it ready to transport to North Carolina so uh, we, we can actually split up if we got enough people into two crews and do that. But uh, that will be November the 23rd. So if you can, listen, I know we do a lot. I was telling Mr. Cole on the way out, uh, on the way to church today, he's like, man, we got cuts back, amen? But, uh, you know, we, we, we love to be busy doing the work of the Lord. And if you, it, it, we realize everybody's not going to be available for everything that we do. But if you are available and you want to be involved in the things that we got planned, by all means, please be here. And if you can't, we understand. But uh, we would like, if you could, help come help us set up for those things. It'll be a great time. Amen. I mean, I believe Brother Wayne and Brother Keith are going back to North Carolina today after church to, uh, to do some more mission work there. We got your donations turned in. They'll be taking those up today uh, and uh, taking that, that load of stuff. We had a ton of coats brother um michael and his company barn store donated to us last week we'll be taking those up in a few weeks uh so you be praying for them as they go minister in north carolina this week as well okay all right i believe that's all the the if i missed anything somebody fill us in at, at, in a little later but uh brother tony appreciate you we're going to have a special come around now special. special's going to come and sing today so amen let's make you come bless us where you're singing Let's worship the Lord today, man.
Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to break. But I'm holding on to a hope that won't fade. Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now. Come and turn this around. Deep down I know this world isn't home. Come, Jesus, come. There'll be no war and there'll be no chains when Jesus comes. Let today be the day He'll come for the weak And the strong just the same And all will believe In the power of His name Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now. Come and turn this around. down I know this world isn't home come Jesus come come Jesus come one day he'll come and we'll stand face to face Come and lay it all down Cause it might be today The time is right now There is no need to wait Your past will be washed By rivers of grace Come, Jesus, come. We've been waiting so long for the day you return to heal every hurt and right every wrong. We need you right now. Come and turn this around. Deep down I know this world isn't home. Come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come. Come, Jesus, come.
Amen. Appreciate that singing from our choir this morning. Wasn't it good? Amen. If you got your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Judges. Um, the past few weeks we've been going through a series of messages called Just Tell Me the Truth. We finished that up and uh, we're going to just go where the Lord leads this morning. And uh, I'm thankful that we can sing that. Those that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior can sing that song that the choir just sang with full confidence, Come, Jesus, Come. I'll be honest with you, I love my life, I love my family, I love this church, I love everything that God allows me to do, but if he came today, I would not be upset, amen? I would be happy, because I'm stepping from death to life, and from, from corruption to incorruption, and, and going to a better place that we all long for and look for, uh, that beautiful land that that song t talks about. But I want you to know, if you're here this morning and you're lost and you don't know Jesus, you can't sing that song with confidence because if he comes, you'll still be here. And because of that, then you have no hope and there's no, no chance of, of us uh, coming to know him again if you've sat under the preaching of the gospel. So I pray if you're here this morning, you can't sing that song, Come Jesus Come, with all confidence that, that when he comes that you're going to where he's at and you're going to go with him. I pray that you just listen to the word of God this morning. Let it uh, affect your heart and let it touch you this morning and, uh, and, and, and obey it, respond to it. You know, so many times we, we, the gospel is preached. It's preached plainly. The Holy Spirit moves and there's conviction going on all over the church house and then people walk out without responding. Just respond to what the, what the Spirit wants you to do this morning. I know that God will bless you. We're going to be in the book of Judges, chapter number 2. I'm going to read just a few verses of scripture this morning. I'm going to give you what the Lord's laid on my heart. We're going to leave and uh, we'll go get something to eat. But I pray that you just uh, allow God this time to speak to you. If you got your place, Judges chapter 2, let's stand our feet. I'm going to begin reading in verse 17 today. The Bible says, And yet they would not hearken unto their judges... But they went a whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them, and they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. And when the Lord raised up them up judges, and when the Lord was with the judge, he delivered them out of their hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it had repented the Lord because of their groanings, by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you this day as humble as we know how. Father, you know the words that you've spoken into my heart this week, God, and I pray that you would now give me the ability through the power of the Holy Spirit to preach it in your way, the way that you'd have it to be preached. God, I pray that, Lord, you would just speak through me today as a vessel. Lord, I pray that you cleanse me, God. Lord, I cannot stand in this sacred place, Lord, without being clean and Lord, being pure of, of the things that I've done wrong. And Lord, I have done things wrong. And I ask you to forgive me, Lord, before I stand to preach your word, God. And I pray, God, that it would be a, a blessing to somebody. Lord, I pray that it would touch somebody's heart. And if there's one here that's lost, I pray that you call them under repentance. Lord, for us that are saved, God, I pray that we would just get founded in our faith today, Lord, to continue walking with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated this morning. I want to preach on this thought this morning, lessons learned, lessons learned. And in my study and in my, my title here, I got a question mark behind that, uh, lessons learned. Have you ever learned some lessons the hard way? Yes. Have you ever heard this saying that sometimes you can ha learn a lesson the easy way or the hard way? How many of you will, will, be, uh, will be truthful and say, I've had to learn some lessons the hard way? Sometimes they call that the school of hard knocks, amen? Uh, I, I'm going to give you one from my life. I wish sometimes I could get some of y'all to come up here and tell some of the funny stories that happened to y'all. Y'all know all about me, but I'm going to tell you one to me today. When I was uh, a few years back, 
I was doing a lot of work, going around, hauling equipment around, doing chicken house work and things of that nature. And uh, if I had to go very far, I always had to chain my, my tractor down. And we had them old school, we called them bucking dogs. If you know what I'm talking about, it's an old school, it, some of y'all city folks, it's binders, okay? I think that's what the correct word is for them. It's those things. But these were the old school, and they were bucking dogs. And you would hook it up, and it pull, and it put tension on that chain, and, and, and stationary that, that piece of equipment down. But the problem with those things are they dangerous, amen? They are dangerous. If you've ever used one of those old school ones, it's just lever tension there. It's, it's dangerous. Not like these new ingenious ones that, that are safe and you can just put pressure on. These you had to kind of get, get the pressure on. And I was told by some wise people, be very careful when you use that thing because them things will hurt you if you're not careful. And I said, okay. How many of y'all know sometimes you got to learn things the hard way? Amen. I was uh, on a job up above Bowden. I was uh, pulling my tractor on there, put the chain through it, found the, the, the farthest one I could get with my hook and tried to buck that thing down, and it was just more than I could do. I couldn't get it with my own weight. I was putting all my weight on it, trying to get that thing tied. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go. So I went down to the next one. Well, I could just do it too easy. It just wasn't any tension on it. So there was an in-between factor there. I couldn't really get the right amount of tension or, or uh, I had too little tension or too much. And I thought this. I said, I've seen a lot of people take, they'll put a pipe on that thing. Call it a cheetah bar. And they'll be able to put more leverage on it and they tighten that thing down. The only problem was I didn't have one of them cheetah bars. Amen? So I had to find the next best thing which was a random receiver hitch laying in the back of my truck. That thing wasn't about that long, and it was dangerous. And I thought to myself before I started, I said, you better be careful. You can knock your brains out right here with this thing if you're not careful. So I put it on there, and I started pulling, and about that time that thing slipped off and went right by my head. I was like, whoo, that was close. Man, I almost, I mean, I, I about broke my nose or busted my head wide open right there. And guess what I did? I put it right back on there <laughs> and tried it again. Okay, lesson learned the hard way. This time it slipped off and it did not miss. I'm talking about right between the eyes, right there in my nose. I was seeing stars. It was like a mule had jumped up and kicked me right in the face. Blood going everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, probably y'all, probably some of y'all remember this because I had to preach like that after, afterward. I had this big cut across my nose. I'm pretty sure it broke it. Uh, but it, anyway, I, 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 had a very, I could have very easily learned that lesson the first time without having to get smacked in the face and breaking my nose and doing all this. I mean, I... I'm not working with much already, and I don't need to mess it up any more than it already is, amen? But I had to learn that lesson the hard way. Now, that's the story of my, in my life. Listen, I got a thousand of these stories, learn, lessons learned the hard way. I, I'm not very intelligent, I seem, because I always seem to have to learn them the hard way. But we all have that. We can go back to things in our life where we uh, learn things the hard way. There's a saying that says this, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. This statement rings more true this morning than any other time in, in history. Those that do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. In our story, in our text this morning, I'm going to give you some background in just a minute about the book of, of Judges. The, the, the children of Israel had, had done some things and they had an opportunity to learn and do some things different, yet they did not. But listen, we got the history in the book this morning of how Israel did not learn and the things that they had to go through. So my question is this morning, church, America, will we have learned some lessons through what God has allowed? Because listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. I realize what I'm about to say. Probably 
40-something percent of, the, of America won't agree with me, and there may be some of you in here that don't agree with me. And, that, and if that's true, that's okay. Listen, you don't have to agree with me on everything. You won't. We're just people. But if you don't see what God did for our nation this past week, I praise God His holy name for hearing the cries of His people this week. Listen, if we ain't got nothing else, somebody was talking about, oh, Georgia got beat. I said, man, I don't even worry about Georgia after Tuesday, amen. Georgia can lose the rest of the, rest of the year. It ain't going to bother me. I mean, it's not. After this week, I was like, hey, thank you, Jesus, for what God has done in this place. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. Do I, can I tell you what God did for us this past week? And like I said, I know there's probably a lot of people that won't agree with this. They, they feel right the opposite of this. But I believe God heard, from heaven, heard our, our cries this morning, and he's began to heal our land. And he, he's done some things. Listen, he poured out grace on this country that this country did not deserve. Can I tell you that this morning? From all the things that we have done in the past, from things that we have let go on, we did not deserve what we got this week. Amen? Listen, what we deserve was judgment. Listen, you can't run and you can't just say it's okay for women to kill babies and do all this and that be your platform and run on it and, and think that God's not going to judge that. He could have judged that. He could have judged our country, but he did not. You know why? Because he's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. Listen to this. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 145, 8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. Boy, I'm glad he's a great, merciful God this morning. Amen. I praise his holy name. But listen, he's heard our cries and he gave us what we asked. So many of us was, was praying, God, we just... We want what your will is. We want you to save our nation. We want you to give us some time. And we want to retake back and be a nation that is uh, a nation, one nation under God. We want to make all those things true again. And God answered and heard our prayers. Listen, we need to praise God for him today. And we need to give him glory for what he's done. But this is the question. How are we going to respond to this mercy? Now, what are we going to do because of the mercy? That we have. Are we going to learn his way? Or are we going to learn a lesson the hard way? Listen, you know what usually happens when people pray about something? Brother Edward, they'll go to God and they'll just flood the throne room of grace. And they'll pray, God, I need you to do this for me. And God hears and he answers that prayer. And most of us, and listen, I'm as guilty of this as anybody. Most of us, once we get that prayer answered, we go right back to what we was doing before. We go right back to the habits that we had before. We get, sometimes we even go and do the, the things that got us in the place that we were before that we asked God to get us out of. You're right. And we'll go right back to it. So how are we going to respond as children of God, as the church of Jesus Christ in this day, how are we going to respond to the mercy that God poured out on this country and on us heard our prayers, how are we going to respond? Are we going to recognize this mercy and act upon it, causing us to change our habits, causing us to change pursuits? Or are we going to go back to the same way and just continue at status quo and think, well, we got what we wanted, so that's all we needed. Or are we going to change? I say we need to learn a lesson from the book. <clears throat> learn a lesson from Israel in the book of Judges and not cause oppression and burdens to come back on us. But let's learn a lesson. Uh, lesson, the easy way. You know what the easiest way to learn a lesson is? To hear good, sound, wise advice and take it. Instead of have to experience it for ourselves. People, they, they, there's some, some of these gray-haired saints in this church and if you sit down and talk to them, they can give you some. And young people, can I say this? I would encourage you to do this. Talk to them. Ask them about some of the experiences they've had in their life. And when they say, if you're smart, you won't do this, 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 because I did that, and it was, it was tough, it was hard, 
go this way. And if you'll take that advice, you won't have to learn the hard way. You can learn the easy way by taking good godly counsel and allowing this. And I want us as a church, I want us as a country to take good godly counsel from the book of the, the, of the scriptures today and learn what they did not do and learn what we should do. So I'm going to give you three things of that today. But in our scripture today in the book of Judges, just to give you some background on this, the, the, the children of Israel had cried out to God. They were under evil oppression, under evil um, dictator of Pharaoh in Egypt. They had cried out, asked God to, to deliver them out of that. God rose up a man named Moses. He sent him before Pharaoh. He, he sent those plagues. He got them out of Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea. They went into the wilderness. And, and, and he brought them up to the very uh, borders of Canaan land, the promised land that he had promised unto them. And he sent some spies in and said, I want you to spy it out and see what it's, what it's like. And they come back and two of the spies said, it is exactly what God said it would be. It's, it's a land flowing milk and honey. The grapes were so big, we had, to, we had to tote it. It took two or three men to tote one, one uh, little bunch of grapes. Uh, everything is just as God said it was. Let us go up and uh, possess it and claim it right now. But there was ten others that come back and said, Yeah, they're right. All that stuff was there, but there's also giants there. And I don't think we can handle them. They gave an evil report. Out of that evil report, the people got scared and got upset and said, We're, we just don't want to go in. We, we just don't think we can, we, we can take the land. So God caused that generation to waste away in the wilderness. They wandered for 40 years. And he said, before you, any of you go into the promised land, you'll have to die off in the wilderness. And that's what they did. But after Moses died, he raised up a new man called Joshua. Joshua took over in Moses' place. And Joshua now, after the 40 years is gone and all those have passed away that were unfaithful and unbelieving, he said, now we're going to go in and possess this land. They went in, they conquered the land. They got rid of all the big enemies. They got rid of all the, the Jerichos and, and, and the big ones and the, 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 the Amorites and the, and the Jesubites and all those people. They got rid of them, but they decided to leave the lesser people alone. Instead of just wiping them off the face like God said, he said, we'll, we'll just leave them here and we'll put them to tribute. So now they came in, they conquested this land. And, but they didn't get completely rid of, uh, rid of everybody. After they fully, not, didn't fully conquest it, something happened. Joshua passed away. He died off the scene. And this is what your Bible said in the book of Judges. After Joshua, no man stood in the gap. No man stepped up to lead the people. And because of that, it said the people did what was right in every own in, in that man's own eyes. In other words, they didn't listen to good godly leadership. They just did what was right in their eyes. And can I say this? I've said this before. If you do what's right in your eyes, it's almost certainly going to be what's wrong in God's eyes. Amen. If we're left to our, our devices and our desires, they're going to be fleshly and they're not going to be spiritual. If we do what's right in our eyes, we're going to do what's wrong in God's eyes. And that's exactly what took place. There was nobody to, to lead them. There was nobody to take them in. And they came under oppression. They would uh, be enslaved. They would come. God would allow oppression to come. And then they would pray and ask God to deliver them. And all through the book of Judges, he would rise up a leader called a judge. And he would, they would righteously lead the people. They would overthrow the, the, the oppressors that were oppressing them, and he would give them deliverance. And as long as that judge lived, the people did good. But when that judge died, then they went right back to doing what was right in their own eyes. And listen, I'm, I'm not deflecting. I'm not trying to impose anything on any leader in our country. I'm talking about God right now, okay? I'm not talking about leaders, and I'm not putting them on a pedestal and saying they're anything. This is what I'm saying is we have to follow God's word as Christians. As Christians, we have to follow what God's word says. He lifted them up, he would deliver them. This pattern plays out seven times. Seven times in the book of Judges, this, this same pattern uh, plays out. 
the same pattern over and over again. And I, I think it's safe to say that it was hard for Israel to learn the le lesson. They had to learn it the hard way. And they eventually got to a point where they didn't want to judge at all. They said, we just want a king. And God said, what do you think I am? I'm king over all of you. And if you'll just look to me, I'll guide you and I'll lead you. And they said, no, we want an earthly king. And God broke his heart and he, he gave them a king. And we know how all this works out. It doesn't really go the way that, that they need it to go. But there's God... Is, is coming to strengthen us. And what I'm trying to say is, I'm trying to get to this point. God's people need to learn from this story of what not to do. Right. Listen to me. Do you know what we did, all of us? I know this church, and I know you, some of you talked to me personally and said, I'm praying. Uh, I, I, I had people that called me and said, I want you to come pray with us. <coughs> We're nervous. We're anxious about what's going to happen. Uh, we need you to pray about this preacher. We just don't know what's going to happen to our nation. And we began to pray, and God heard, and yeah. God delivered us. Amen? And he gave us exactly what we asked for. So I believe, this is what I believe God's doing. We, said, we just sang that song, Come, Jesus, Come. Yeah. I believe Jesus is getting ready to come back at any moment. You say, well, why in the world would he give us what we want and then come back and get us? I believe this, Brother Edward. I believe God is strengthening His church. The Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. Amen. And listen, He's not going to come for a bride that's crippled and beat down and, and defeated and, 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 and looks like she's been drugged through the mud. When He comes back, He's coming back for a bride that is on fire for Him, more in love with Him than He has ever been, than she has ever been. A bride that is pure, a bride that is ready to receive her, 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 her husband, her king when He comes. And I believe that's what He's doing in the church right now. Hey, I told Mr. Nicole, I said, we have seen more people saved in the last year or so than I believe I have ever seen in my life. I'm not just talking about in this church. Lord, have mercy. Praise God. He's given us souls for our labor. Amen. He has given us souls. We've seen them saved. But every church you go talk to that's truly serving God, they're seeing people saved left and right. He is drawing people into the family of God because I believe he's getting ready to come back. Amen. Listen, what we have to do <coughs> is to realize that he's getting ready for wedding day, amen. It's almost wedding day for the church and, and, and his husband, for the king. And he's coming back soon. And we cannot turn back now. We're so close. Listen to what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, Blackjack Mountain translation, that means we ain't going back. We're going forward. We believe in the saving of the soul of our people and our judge, uh, of the people and our king. So there's three lessons that we can learn from the book of Judges. I want to give you three lessons today that we can, we can learn, that we must do, that we must not go back to. Three things that we can learn. Number one, folks, we've got to be faithful. L look at this. Chapter 2 of Judges. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt. I have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league with, with the inhabitants of the land. You shall throw down their altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? He comes, in this first verse here, it says there's an amazing thing that takes place. This is what they call in theology a Christophany. It is one of the places where Jesus shows up in your Old Testament before Bethlehem. L listen, do y'all realize that Jesus didn't just show up? He just didn't come into being at Bethlehem, amen? That was his earthly ministry. That's when he came to earth, but he always has been Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He always has been, always will be, and always is. Amen. He's everywhere. He's always existed. The Bible says, let us make man in our own image in, the first, in, in Genesis in the creation story because he was present with God in the beginning. But he came to earth in Matthew 
in, in the Bethlehem account when he came to this earth, but he's always been there. And before that, he would show up from time to time in the Old Testament. And it's called a Christophany. That's when Jesus would show up in the Old Testament. And he would be called the angel of the Lord or something of that nature. Well, look in verse 1. It says, and the angel of the Lord came up. This, is an, this happens 80 times in the Old Testament. But 20 of those 80 happened in the book of Judges. I believe Jesus was like, y'all need to learn a lesson right here, amen? I'm trying to teach you something if you'll just learn. He came and he appeared. And how do you, you say, well, preacher, how do you know that's Jesus? Look what it says. And an angel of the Lord came up to Gilgal from Bachman and said, I. Does anybody know what I is? That is a, a, a pronoun. I looked this up. A pronoun meaning it refers to the person speaking or writing. In other words, he says, I made you to go up out of Egypt. Who, sent, who, who brought Israel out of Egypt? God himself. Amen. Uh, he says, I promised you and swear a land, and I swear unto your fathers. I did that. Who promised that unto Abraham? God the Father. Amen. He did all those things. So he's referring to himself personally here. He's saying, I am an angel of the Lord. I am Jesus Christ incarnate as an angel of the Lord. But I am talking to you right now. And he said, this is what I want to, want to tell you. Y'all got to be faithful. Amen. Listen, I've come trying to get you into this place. And I'm trying to give you some things. But you have got to be faithful unto me. What's his purpose? To cause Israel to be faithful to his commands. He says, this is what I want you to do. I, I told you to do, but you have not obeyed it. But you need to. And what I, what's the point I'm trying to make here? Church, we didn't deserve what we got this week. But because we got what we got, we need to be faithful to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to be faithful in our service. We need to be faithful in our attendance. We need to be faithful in our witness. We need to be faithful in our prayer life. We need to be pray faithful in studying the Word of God. And I'm not just talking about when you come to church and let the preacher read it to you. I'm talking about in your quiet time at home. You get in that book. You Amen. listen, whatever it takes, however you got to learn. You get right. in that book and learn what he's saying and tell him what he is. We have got to be faithful unto him. That's what he's wanting us to do, to be faithful. We have a responsibility to respond faithfully to God's grace of an answered prayer. What do you expect your children to do for you, parents? When you ask them to do something for you, obey. And, they, and you do it, you expect them to what? Obey. And respond faithfully to your commands. And listen, we're no different. We're his children. We're the sheep of his pastor. Listen, we, this, this ought to be something that you want to do. Amen. Praise God. He done what I need. I asked him. He heard my prayer. So now I'm going to be faithful to him. Not because I have to, but because I want to. Amen. Because I love him. Because he's been good to me. And I'm going to give him. You say, well, what's the benefits of that? The benefits are blessings. Amen. He'll pour out blessings in your life for faithfulness. You say, well, uh, does it matter that I come to church? It absolutely matters that you come to church. You know why? Because it doesn't matter to this church. We love you to be here. We want you to be here. But where it matters is in your life. Because when God looks down and sees your faithfulness, he said, that's my faithful son. I'm going to pour out blessings. I'm going to, I'm going to hear more prayers and answer those prayers. I'm going to set him up or set her up and give her the desires of her heart. It will bring blessings to your life. It will bring growth in your life. You'll get more grounded in your faith, in the spirit, in the word of God. You'll be able to grow closer to him. And it will give you more strength to go through the hard times and the storms when they come. Be faithful. Number two, not only do we got to be faithful, but we got to follow. Whew, this is the mistake that Israel made. Look at verse 10 in chapter 2. And also all that generation that were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord nor the works which he had done for Israel. The problem was that group of generation with Israel raised up kids and, and raised up a generation behind them that didn't know anything about what God had done before them. They didn't know anything about the, the, the exodus. They didn't know anything about the miracles in the wilderness. You know why? Because that generation didn't follow 
They didn't follow the Lord and they didn't pass that down. We have a responsibility as the church to follow him. Now listen, I don't believe we're going to have to follow him very long before he comes back and gets us. But we ha I have no idea, I have no confirmation of how long that will be. So you know what we got to do? We got to just live every day like he's coming back, but make plans like he may not come back before we go through the grave. So we, that's how we got to live. We got to anticipate him coming back. But continue to live, continue to teach our kids because we don't know how long God's going to give us. We got to show them who God is and how to serve God and how to follow God. And we got we got to raise up a generation that will take the things that we have learned and the things that God has done for us and take them and look latch on them and say, "Boy, my mom and daddy did that, and it helped them, and I'm gonna, I'm going to do that in my life." You know who's who's teaching your children more than anything. We won't say, well, the schools teach them and all that. No. Daddy and mama, you're teaching your children. You know who they're looking at on Sundays to see if they get up and go to church? It ain't the preacher. It ain't the Sunday school teacher. It's mama and daddy. And if mama and daddy say it's going to be a priority for me, I, let me back that up. I'm not trying to say anything, but daddy is your responsibility. It's not mama and daddy. It's daddy and mama. Amen? So many times we got mama's been the one that had to get the kids up and go to church. But, Daddy, that's your responsibility. You are the spiritual leader of your home, and you should be in church. It should be your decision. Our family is going to church today. We're going to serve the Lord, and you got to make that decision. And when they see you value that, you know what they're going to do? They're going to value that. And, and listen, they may not be as perfect as you are, and they may not be as faithful as you are, but I'm going to tell you, when you train it in their lives, they'll grow up when they're older. They'll say this. Well, I need to get in church. Mom and daddy went to church, and I always see how God blessed their lives. I'm going to do the same thing. So it's up to you to pass down this faith of following Jesus. Let me say this. If they see you not putting any emphasis on church or any emphasis on following God or any emphasis on serving, they're not going to eat it. They're going to fall out and do exactly what you do. So the onus is on you to, to follow him, to continue to do those things. Israel said this, we'll just do whatever we want to do. And their children rose up and said, we'll just do what mom and daddy did and just do whatever we want to do. And the Bible says they did what was right in their own eyes. Can I tell you, I think that's what's wrong with the other half of our nation here. People, there's people that fell out of church. And listen, can I say this? Can I be a little controversial this morning? There's a lot of folks that fell out of church for good reason. You say, why is that? Because they were some stiff-necked Help me, Lord. There were some folks that drove people out of churches because they're so stiff-necked and they're so mean and they're so judgmental. They would not accept people, for people. And I'm not talking about accepting sin, but accepting people. Listen, we are to accept people and reject sin. Amen. We are to love people and reject sin. And there was a group of, uh, there was a generation and churches that grew up that pushed people out and they said, I don't want to have anything to do with that church. I seen a Facebook post this week. This lady put it. She said, this is what I'm wearing to church. She said, I grew up hating church. She said, I went to church and there was people that looked down their nose at me and looked down their nose at my family and I left the church and I never wanted to go back because I said, they're all judgmental. They're all just, uh, they're, 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 they're hypocrites. They're all these things. And she said, I made every excuse not to go to church. She said, but I got into a friend group and she said that friend grew, uh, was in church, grew close to God. They had the right kind of relationship with God. And they began to ask me to come to church. And when I went, I found out they're, they, they're what you're supposed to be. They loved me. They accepted me. Listen, they prayed for me. They helped me through things. And they helped me to stop things. And she said, so this is what I'm wearing to church that I thought I'd never go back to. But I'll always be in church because this is what I'm supposed to do. Listen, there's a lot of people that got pushed out of church for uh, good reasons. But that don't mean they got to stay out. Amen. If they come in and find a place that says we're going to serve, follow, and serve God and follow God according to this book. And I'm not talking about accepting sin. We, 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 don't, we don't condone sin in any matter, shape, or form. This Bible does not condone it. But the Bible loves the one that's involved in it. Amen. Right. And he'll change that person. Listen, Jesus came. They said, oh, yeah, Jesus sat with sinners. He did. He absolutely did. But he never let them stay in that same spot. 
He changed them. And that's what we're supposed to do. Draw them out. But we got to follow him. This church, we got to follow him. And I'm not just talking about Ephesus Baptist Church. I'm talking about every church. I'm talking about the people of God. We got to follow the Lord. And number three, we got to fight. We got to keep fighting for what we believe in. We got to keep fighting for the truth of the gospel. We got to keep fighting for what this is. Israel's biggest mistake was this. Let me give it to you. Chapter 1, verse 28. And it came to pass when Israel was strong that they put the Canaanites to tribute and did not utterly drive them out. So let me tell you what that means. It says when they were strong, they had the ability to overcome. They had overthrew the, the hardest, the toughest enemies that were in that land, the inhabitants. They had kicked them giants out that they were so worried about. They got rid of them. They, they kicked them out, no problem. They got kicked out the hardest enemies, but the ones that weren't so bad... The Canaanites, they were the smaller group that was there. They said, well, I'm tired of fighting. Let me ask you, has you ever been tired of fighting seeing before? I mean, really, I'm being honest. Do you ever get tired of fighting seeing? It's like, man, I'm tired of this. Why not got to fight this all the time? I just ain't going to fight it no more. I'm just going to let it be. I'm just going to ignore it. They just got tired of fighting. So they said, we're not going to just completely kick the Canaanites out. We'll just... Let them stay there, but we'll make them useful. We'll make them pay us tax, and they'll pay us tribute, and they'll be a benefit for us. But in all effects, what they really were, they were a snare to them. They did not kick them all out. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? This is what I'm talking about. In the spiritual sense, that's the way we do sin lots of times. We get saved or we come to Christ or we get revived and we kick all the big sins out of our life. And let me say this, they ain't no big sins or little sins. They just sins. But we as people, we categorize them and we label them big sins and little sins. And we come back to the Lord or we get saved and maybe we got an addiction problem. We'll kick that to the curb and say, I'm not going to depend on alcohol or drugs anymore and I'm not going to be addicted. And we overcome that addiction. Maybe it may be something, maybe it's adultery. We, over, we overcome that and we, we kick that out. That's a big one. Murder, I don't do any murder. That's, that's a big, big sin right there. I kick that one out and I get rid of that. Maybe it's lying. I, I had a problem with lying, so I got rid of lying. I don't lie anymore. I just tell the truth. Maybe it's the way we talk and the things that come out of our mouth. We say, I'm going to clean this mouth up. I'm going to help the, let the Word of God bridle my tongue and I clean my talk up. But yet, we'll... Look at them big sins and say, I, I did good to clean all them up. But we won't look at anger. We won't look at covetousness. -ness. We won't look at jealousy. We won't look at bitterness. We'll just leave that bitter heart in there and just that bitterness in our heart, somebody that done us wrong down the road. We'll, just, we'll leave that in there. Uh, we, we, we won't look at that lust. We'll say, oh, it's just a little sin. I, I can just kind of forget about it. Unfaithfulness, I, I just, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. Uh, I, I won't worry about all anxiety, worry. Y'all know worry is a sin. Yeah. God says be anxious about nothing, to be Amen. careful for nothing, but in prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. He said don't worry about stuff, but pray about it. Yes. But we'll say, oh, I'll just hold on to that worry because it benefits me. It helps me get through these times when I ain't got nothing else to worry about, I don't worry about this or that. We'll hang on to those little things, anger. We'll think they're just little sins, but they're still sin. Right. And sooner or later, we get angry with a brother or a sister, or we get jealous of what God's doing for somebody else and he's not done for me. And we get unfaithful, we let lust well up in our lives, and the next thing you know, we're back where we used to be. Because it won't drive out the sin. Not big sin, not little sin, but sin in our life. So if we're going to continue to do it, we've got to fight sin every single day. We've got to fight the thoughts that come in our mind, the things that enter into our heart. We've got to fight and, and, and try to get rid of the big sins and the little sins and just sin itself. If it's sinful, we need to get rid of it and, move, and keep fighting because sin is sin. And God will deal with it, and he's not happy with any of them. We've got to continue to fight that we conquer all these enemies. Because, listen, 
when Israel was strong, if they would have continued to get rid of the Canaanites, they wouldn't have had any trouble. They would have been free. But those Canaanites stayed there. You know what they did? They served other gods. And they began to marry with them. And then they began to serve other gods. And then they began to go after Balaam. And they began to do all these things because they were just a little people. And they were a benefit. And it caused them to go right back into that cycle of being oppressed and asking God to deliver them again. So three things we got to do. We got to be faithful. We got to follow and show our children how to follow. We got to pass it down to the next generation. We got to keep fighting sin every single day until the Lord comes back. And if we'll do those things, we can learn a lesson and not the hard way. It, 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 I'm just going to tell you my opinion. You may not agree with me. If you don't, that's fine. But the last four years is part of that cycle, I believe, that we've been in. We, we've made some. Some, th some decisions in our, and I know it ain't us, and I know it ain't you, and I know you probably voted away, but we allow people to get in, in power that push some agendas that were absolutely opposite of what this book taught. And we went through oppression for about four years for, because of those things. But can I tell you this? God heard our cries. He delivered us. And listen, I can't tell you it's going to be perfect but I can tell you this, when, when, when uh, I, I got a feeling in my heart that God has said, I, I'm going to take care of your needs and what you need if you'll just follow me. So we got to learn from those things. And, we got, and God has delivered us, so this is what we got to do. We got to be faithful, we got to follow him, and we got to continue to fight. Let me ask you this, have you learned a lesson? Or will you have to go and learn it the hard way? We got to keep fighting this morning. Maybe you're here this morning, come on with a song, Brother Tony, if we're... I'm going to sing a, a verse of invitation. I'm done. Maybe you're here this morning and you're saying this. Well, Brother Kevin, I've never accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Uh, I need to know how to do that. I've heard you preach about it. God's been dealing with me for weeks. The Bible says all you have to do is ask him. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sins, was put in a tomb and on the third day he arose again and is at the right hand of the Father making an intercession for us. Now if you believe that, you can be saved. You say, I put my faith in the work that Jesus did on the cross. You can be saved. And you ask him, come to your heart, he'll save you today. If that's you, I want you to come when we get ready to sing. But maybe you're here today. God's answered some prayers in your life. And I'm not just talking about who's in the, in the White House. He's answered some prayers that you've called out to, but you've not really kept up your end of the bar. You just went back to doing things like you always done it, like it was always habit to do. But you're going to say, not today. Lord, I'm going to change. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to follow you. And Lord, I'm going to keep fighting until I get everything out of my life that I need to get out. Maybe there's some of you that's in a battle right now. There's some sins. There's some things in your life that you thought would be okay, but you've realized they're not okay anymore. You've got to ask God to help you get those out. When we pray, I want you to come down this altar and call on a merciful, powerful God and ask Him to help you deliver you from those things. Maybe you're here and you just want to say, Lord, I thank you today for all that you've done. Lord, you're so good to us. We didn't deserve it, but you did it anyway. We're going to give you praise and honor. If that's what you want to do, I want you to come. However you see fit, you obey the Lord. As we stand to our feet this morning. We're going to pray, and then the, we're going to sing a verse of invitation. We're going to go ahead and open the doors of the church. If you want to make Ephesus your home, you come at any time during this invitation today, and you, uh, uh, you can join with this church and be a part of this church. Just obey the Lord as we pray. Lord, I love you. I thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, I pray that you'd help us put something in us that will say, Lord, I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to be faithful to you, Lord, because you've been more faithful to me than I've ever been to you. And I thank you for it. Lead God and direct this invitation. In Jesus' name, amen.
we got some great teachers for furthering the learning and studying of God's Word. Amen. We did have a good number this week, this morning, 138. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord for that. Please come out and be involved in Sunday school if you're not. I've seen a lot of new faces come in the last few weeks, but appreciate that. I hope you get involved and stay involved and continue to pray for Sunday school. Anything else? for today, Lord, and thank you allowing us to come back to church, Lord, and just uh, thank you for this message, Lord, just uh, let us uh, heed these words, Lord, and, and use them in our life, Lord, individually and as a church, Lord, and just uh, go with us as we go our separate ways, Lord, and just lead us back to this place, and thank you for the many blessings on my life, Lord, and just all of you done for me personally, Lord, and I just want to thank you for that, I ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.